Oh yeah, school is once more in session. It's IOP Academy, yep. tormented by gnomes. Your game master, joined as always by Crowen, Leg Day, and Lemon Kiwi. Crowen, how's it going? Is even school anymore? It doesn't feel uh, like school. I mean, Academy. there is a school. Things happen <laughs> there. Is there. A school. Things exist. Uh, Allegedly. For the time Allegedly. being. Things are things are good. Uh, the TFT stuff this past weekend was fun. Mm -hmm. I got a six a.m. flight tomorrow morning. To less fun, friend, So yeah, less fun, but uh, should be a good time though. But yeah, that's me. Cool, cool. Leg day. What's going on with you? Uh, in the most platonic way possible, I've spent most of today under a desk, uh, <laughs> dis disassembling a PC. You know, is that, is that what you kids call it these days? Time. Hey yo. <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, it's been a it's been a stressful day trying to figure out what's wrong with my primary money maker, and uh, yeah, the stress is only going to continue tomorrow. So I'm here for a for a break into a fantasy world where everything is fine, right, Nuns? Your primary money maker? Did something happen to your hair? It looks fine. <laughs> it's all getting cut off tomorrow as well. <laughs> I'm nothing now. Uh, Jen, what's going on? How are things? I'm still stun locked. <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> Tasha's mind whip has been used effectively. Uh, nothing, not as exciting as being under a desk or traveling, but <laughs> just it's my day off and I get to play D and D. Life's good. Let's go. Let's go. Oh man, it's gonna be one of those nights. I can already tell. <laughs> when last we left our heroes, they had wrapped up. A daring magical strike against the machine city of Defraxis. The plan went off almost without a hitch. Using powerful magic, the Archmages and their students opened a gate hundreds of feet in the air above the city of Lenses, combined their power to do something, and then closed the gate. And it went really well, but nobody actually knows what they were doing. And the Academy seems to have a prisoner nobody remembers and no one remembers capturing. Uh, could this in any way be related to Alexander wielding the power of the Book of Dawn and royally it up? Obviously not. But yeah, our heroes just accomplished a very successful raid, but have no idea what they did or why. That's a microcosm for this entire campaign. <laughs> see now it's not just the players who have no idea what's going on it's the actual characters this is going to be really good for role playing it's going to make life a lot easier oh yeah oh yeah why oh, do you sound so Canadian it happens sometimes oh, is, is this the budding start of a Canadian accent yeah I'm converting you so <laughs> <laughs> one of us eh <laughs> <laughs> all right our heroes are in the meeting room, all sort of standing around wondering what they're doing here. There is a brief moment of confusion, and everybody, including Master Untermaler, the Sage, Headmistress Elnau, everyone is confused at the exact same time. And everyone looks at everyone else, noticing that they're all confused. And they're further confused by the fact that everyone's confused. Does anyone know what just happened? Did we just walk in? No, we were we were debriefing after our successful strike on the city. Oh, as an out of character, are we did we just walk into the room? No, when... you've been you you arrived back at the academy after the successful raid and you never left on your part because you were scrying the entire time, Garnet. But they went down to the vault with one yes and then we were going we were sort of on our way there mm -hmm. or were we there already you were on your way you hadn't arrived at the vault yet so we'll have the group of the lot of you all in the same area <clears throat> and you're very shortly going to learn of the confusion of everybody else i can take it from here or you can take the scene let me know because there's a series of events that are likely going to play out at the uh at the close of last session Athelor mm -hmm. confirmed by his tattoo burning into him the like dawn magic tattoo that yes some heavy dawn magic had been used in this area mm -hmm. and it means a lot because the background radiation of dawn magic here is pretty freaking high mm -hmm. I think uh, Monstro would speak up and say that's probably 
book related then, right? Unless someone else messing with a lot of other Dawn magic somewhere else? I highly doubt that. It seems like there's only one real potential culprit. Maybe it has to do with the results of our mission. We, we gotta go tell El now. Mm -hmm. What was the mission again? Well, we went to Defraxis. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We saw and... the design. Did we see? No, we were just... What did... I forgot. We caught a glimpse of the design. <laughs> Literally. <of> the six, <laughs> right? <laughs> we, uh... Yeah, we... Plus one XP. We went... You did not we see Designer design Six thing. himself. Oh, oh okay. okay. And... We stood up at the gate, and we executed on a plan, and it went really well. What was the plan? That, that's, that's weird, right? Um, and it was my plan as well. And I wouldn't forget your plan. Exactly. You might forget what you're up to, but I, I just wouldn't forget it all. Hmm. I've got you back. I always got you back. I didn't win. we won. We're yeah. not dead. Are we dead? I don't think so. I the Lord pinches himself. I'll be dreaming. It hurts. You can also make a wisdom or intelligence check to see if you're awake or not. And as far as you can tell, you're not asleep. You don't seem to be asleep. You can't manipulate reality with your mind, so any more than Pretty normal. Pretty sure I'm conscious here. Do you think the book did something to us? I... I... Dawn magic-ish, maybe? Maybe whatever we did, uh, it got undone? Can... Mm. Is it... Can you do that? I think so. There's some like really powerful magic that you can just like say that things don't happen or do happen or something. I think. I didn't think that dawn magic could affect us while at the academy. Because why hasn't he just used the magic to kill us and not whatever is happening right now? I'm 90% sure we're not dead. <laughs> That's 10% a lot when you think about <laughs> being dead or not. Um... It's nice to know that hell would be with you guys. <laughs> Yay! Does that mean you're as good as us or we're as bad as you? Mm. Let's go see Master L now. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not think cool. about that anymore. <laughs> I don't want to think about being dead. All right. Down in the vaults, the first person that you run into is Master Elna. She is speaking with the sage uh, rather urgently. There's a number of wardens nearby. You now have access to the secret uh, deep vaults, so you know how to go in and out, and the wardens, the elite wardens who are on duty know to let you in. And in those dark, poorly lit corridors, deep within the spire you come across a small chamber an open chamber no doors on it it's like a crossroads where the sage and el now are hushed and speaking with each other athlor garnet mason come here what were the vibes when we approach you just said concerned did they look confused or yes concerned confused worried all that stuff walks over do any of you remember what we just did or why we were hoping you remembered my plan went off about a hitch the yes. stuff yes the plan did work mm -hmm. everything went quite well none of us were hurt and we succeeded do any of you know what we succeeded at completing the plan Okay. Wait, if we can't remember the plan, maybe we were all tricked into thinking it worked, but it didn't? 
Mm, I don't know. Um, Athelor's. I'll just let's Athelor explain it. Show. Like, ah, mm, it's a bit awkward. I've got a thing. You don't have to show it. Just <laughs> describe it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see your bare um, chest. Most, but just... not all, life forms have a thing. Athalor is perfectly normal. <laughs> okay, I, I've got a, I've got, I've got a dawn magicy thing mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. Athalor, <laughs> Athalor's not quite sure how to say that he did this to himself. But anyway, um, it was pretty burny for a couple of minutes back there, and I'm fairly sure that indicates. A large usage of dawn magic. Oh, they give each other a look. It is a dark look. Yeah. That one. The sage immediately departs. Starts walking upstairs. I'm investigating this immediately. El now fires off several sending spells. You can see her just thinking for a moment. Thinking for a moment. He must have used the book. He must have used the book. But we have no way of knowing what it is that he did. Wait. Come with me. And she's going to proceed deeper into the vaults. Okay. Past the cell where Kapesk is still being held. Hi, Kapesk. <laughs> Garnet's like getting more and more stressed because like mm -hmm. the only sense of security she had was that she thought the the dawn magic dome was protecting us from the book. Mm -hmm. And now that this has finally affected us, this is like, well, we could just die at any moment. Yes. And there is no sense of security here. And yep. she is suggested that that book plan earlier, which got kind of shot down. And now she's like fuck, I should have, like, listened to myself, and she might even be, like, talking to herself about it, like, man, I should have just done it. Like, mm -hmm. very stressed right now on our way to the vault. And understandably so. This is something that's been hanging over the heads of the Archmages this entire time. They've felt the sort of Damocles over their heads the moment the book was taken, and they've just been trying to live with it. Another cell door to a similarly warded chamber awaits. And it opens from within, and the enormous frame of Untermaler, Inril Untermaler, leans down as he opens the door and moves aside for you to step into the room. In the center of this cylindrical chamber, floating and bound with dimensional shackles, is a person you've never seen before. Pleasant looking. Young, probably your age, uh, appears human, mechanical arm, and unconscious, frozen, beyond held, all senses cut off from the world. I don't know who this is. That arm looks pretty different, is he? Yes. Can I vibe check Untamalo see if he's lying? Because he's had some bad rap with, uh, I don't know, killing students in his presence. <laughs> it was all Untamalo. Yeah, you can roll You can roll a vibe check. Insight. He wiped everyone's memory. Oh, wait, that was, sorry, with advantage. Uh, take the That's first fine, we roll. take the 12. Uh, it's difficult to read. You know, he's got a very... He's got a snout, totally different facial features, much harder for you. You're a lot more used to re reading more humanoid faces, so you can't really get a, a particular vibe on him. He must be related to our mission, but I don't know how. Do any of you? Elna shakes her head. Just a guy. A kid, even. Where did Apple. you find him, Untamaler? And is very, like, squinting and, like, not pleased with Untamaler right now. In our custody. We've clearly taken him captive. Who's we? Myself and the Wardens, Garnet. Why? From where? 
I don't know. Weird. Yes. <laughs> Darn it. Inril, Athalor is marked huh? with signs that react to dawn magic. And he says that they burned moments ago. And now none of us can remember anything about this person or what we were doing in Defraxis. Hmm. Trying a- his strength against us. Go ahead, Garnet. Um, based on any uh, machine people knowledge, how mm-hmm. common is it to have mechanical limbs if you're not part of a machine clan? Super of rare. Super rare. The designers are the main ones who do mechanical modifications. There are other cultures out there that will also take part of that, but they did it a lot more before the Infernals took over the world. Now that the Infernals have taken over the world, it's a lot more common for anachronists to possess such things. So it has become way less common for non-designer citizens. Can I do a medicine check on his arm? Mm -hmm. Or if if you want me to roll a perception to see like how fresh. Not medicine. I'd love medicine. That's a very, very applicable here. Oh, there's my 20. (laughs) Actual 20. Uh, It can't be, I want to say a few months. I'm having a little trouble remembering. And you can also tell it was self-administered. I would like to do an investigation check to see if I can see any signs of Garnet's telltale magic, namely her twilight tendril having struck this person. Okay, roll it. Hmm. Hard to tell. The spell leaves only subtle signs. Those are academy-issued dimensional uh, shackles, however. You can confirm that much. The stranger slowly spins while levitated, still frozen by magic, Obi-Wan style, second movie. A couple of things. Is there still the eye thing in the person's neck? Is that like visible or is that not a thing? It is not visible at this time. Not visible? Okay. And then I think, um, Launcher also as well, just manifest some inscriptions and try to reveal to see if there's any like hidden glyphs or enchantments on the person. Okay. Mark's runes, words, glyphs. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, actually, under his neck. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm sure point that out and say there's something that's hidden on around here. Everyone, I mean, yeah, it's you can expand it to cause it to reveal themselves with a glow, so that glow would be yeah. visible. So mm-hmm. everybody sees the stranger's throat just start to glow. Careful. It could be a trap. Wouldn't pa- put it past the designers to leave a glyph of warding on one of their own people. So if he's from the designer city, and we just came from a designer city, we had a mission that we forgot about, Dawn Magic is involved... Where that was it used for us to forget about what happened? It's the only thing I can think of right now, but so whoever this is must be connected to Alexander somehow. There's no way that the designer city has access to that much dawn magic, right? If they did, we'd be dead by now, I assume. Look at our priorities. Alexander has the book. We've dealt with several of the other threats. We know that we still need to deal with Kepesk's threat, even though he's been partially neutralized. There are others out there. What would be our priority? It has to be the Book of Dawn. Why would we go through the trouble of expending all this power on Defraxis, which has nothing to do, aside from being a threat, has nothing to do with anything unless it involved the book and Alexander somehow? Was, was he a student here? He's not wearing academy robes. I will search the records. Apple's going to circle in uh, geolocked orbit with the arm mm-hmm. and see if it has any notes of like 
ownership of the artism, like mm-hmm. maker notes, etc., like a, a signature or something mm-hmm. on the mechanical parts. I don't believe it does. Um, you could do well. You have artifice. You took artifice class, right? I do. Okay, give me Arcana on this. It's a pretty high DC, Ooh. and that's a pretty high roll. <laughs> <laughs> okay you absolutely can tell that while this is informed by designer technology the materials used here came from ioth academy they came from the materials that are issued to, to artifice or students if this person made it i think it was made here the, these are materials that we were all assigned in the artificer class. Elna uh, takes a closer look. Master and Tamala look for where was artifice? That's in all of the halls. Year four. Projects from artificer classes, maybe? Our records keepers will be on it immediately. This is going to take more than 25 words. I will return. And he's going to duck underneath and walk out and start making his way through the deep vaults. El now turns and blasts the side of the chamber with a bolt of darkness. And swears vehemently in the Aurai dialect. Athelor leans over and translates the Elvish. (laughs) It was very naughty. (laughs) I have no idea the scale of what just happened. I thought the sphere would protect us. At least somewhat. Should it have a sphere? Should at least resist. As long as he's outside of the sphere. He thinks about that for a moment. It's not a pleasant thought. As long as he's outside the sphere, it should take extra energy for him to affect us directly inside. So either he just has that much power and he was able to break through, or whatever he did wasn't focused on us. And one day it will be. Which I assume is why we took this person from one of the most heavily guarded infernal strongholds on the planet. And why this person demanded a response of an incredibly limited resource. Yes. Yes, it must have been urgent. Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll be back and we'll just uh, scurry off. Okay. You're back. <laughs> El, El now side eyes the door as her apprentice departs. Hmm. Athlor the sage will need your help. I would have put her to work siphoning through this person's memories to see if there's anything we can det- discern from it. But if Dawn Magic was just used, that may be our only help, and that quill may be important for her efforts. Is she in her usual space? Yes. Yes. The moment I reali- we realized some semblance of what happened, I sent her off. Okay. Uh... Athol looks towards Mason, like, wondering if Elnau's going to give him a task, or if, like, you want to come with me? (laughs) Elnau doesn't seem to have something. The sage probably would. She's more tuned in with what's going on with Mason. Uh, fancy coming with Mantra? Yeah, 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 yeah. I will. Cool. Let's, uh, let's quickly go and see one of the worlds going on over there, then. Okay, just once, if you do help and try to 
I don't know, pick apart memories, maybe just careful of the neck thing. It might, if it is a ward, maybe it has some kind of, uh, I don't know, response to that. Mm. More Agathisian ice or something. We'll be on the mm -hmm. lookout. Go ahead. Go. Go, go, go. All right. Garnet, where did you scurry off to? Uh, it's going back to the dorms to knock on an old friend's door. Mm -hmm. uh, Ruby, mm. see if she's home. Okay. Yeah, Ruby is in fact about. And is surprised to see you, but excited, reverent. It's like not very <laughs> it's not very good at hiding her distress, but is trying to seem uh, amicable at the door and asks to come in to not mm -hmm. stay in the hallway too long. Yeah, she'll absolutely let you in. Um, and just kind of stands in her room because she's trying to be very polite and the room is to... traditionally decorated in a lot of ways. It's obvious that a Bronthan lives here. There's the sign of the four pillars on the wall. There's some wood carvings, some candles for a shrine. Uh, like even the, the blankets and such are all of, of the right colors and materials. She takes like a look around and takes a second longer looking at the shrine and then, uh, you know, snaps back to reality kind of thing and looks at Ruby and just kind of asks her for a favor. Um, I, sorry to just come here out of the blue. I, uh. No, 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 no. Thanks for having me. Um, I, I just have to do something and there's a lot going on at the academy and the cost is so big. I don't, I, I don't know what I'm doing. I, I need guidance. I need reassurance. And I just, I wanted to ask if you would want to pray with me. Of course. She kind of like just waits for her to gesture where they should do it or okay. basically he's following her lead on mm -hmm. how to begin. All right. She's going to grab a sensor of incense. It's not lit at the moment and head outside to oh. somewhere where you can see the sun. She just like was like surprised she wanted to leave the room, but she's like, okay, and <laughs> <laughs> just follows. Uh, we'll, we'll head out with you up to one of the higher balconies, not the main landing area, because that tends to get a lot of business, but one of the higher buildings closer to the greenhouse and such, where it's a lot more, um, a lot more open and a lot more private, actually. And she's brought a little icon with her, uh, this incense, some candles and a white cloth. And she's going to go ahead and set that out almost for you, even though it's meant for both of you. Set both of the candles out, light them with her magic. She puts her, her Bronthan ring or mm -hmm. her family ring where she puts the icons and stuff mm -hmm. to help. Gets everything set up and will uh, burn the incense and then uh, hold both of her hands over her heart like wings. And before she starts, she says, is there anything specific that you're, you're looking for, that you're seeking, that we, that we can ask for together or offer? And her eyes are like a little bit watery as she's like thinking about like her dad in this moment. And he's like not really sure because uh, she probably thinks this is like not going to work. Mm -hmm. But she kind of like looks over and uh, thinks for a second and says, uh, if you if you see him too, tell me, OK? He doesn't understand exactly, but doesn't ask either. Just sort of going off of faith here. She'll and close her eyes and wait. Prayers to Zalar are not... Um, usually extemporaneous, formal prayers. It's not uncommon for Zelarians to kind of just talk to their god, but that's almost considered different than formal prayer, especially Bronthan 
Zaylarianism. It's all, there's rites, there's rituals, there's specific words, and they're usually said in the ignan tongue of primordial or in celestial. And Ruby absolutely knows the prayers, was raised from an extremely religious background and is heavily... And so she's going to go ahead and offer some of the prayers that you remember from your childhood. And these are things that, even though it's been years probably, they're burned into your memory. And prayers always start out with uh, invocations. I'll, I'll do a... Yeah, I can do a sample here. Praise be to Zalar, the light that banishes the darkness, the fire of hope that protects us from the chill of despair, the great Phoenix Lord who redeems us in death, the warrior and protector who guards us in times of trouble, the purifier who cleanses our imperfections in the fires of his own glory. Through his eyes, death is humbled and gives way to rebirth. May we rise from the ashes of our own folly and blaze with the knowledge that you have granted us, O Phoenix Lord, that we might become torches casting your light into every corner, expunging the shadow of ignorance from all the faithful. What is Garnet doing while she's reciting? Um, probably thinking about her dad and like asking mm -hmm. him for guidance. Okay. Roll 1d100 for me, please. This again. <laughs> 73. Do, do, do. No, okay, yes, I did. You don't see anything immediately, and you don't feel anything immediately. But the prayer is not a quick thing. This is a... This is one of the bigger rituals. Obviously, Ruby knows who you are now and doesn't want to just do like a quick hand holding, wants to <laughs> show you the reverence that your role as the blessed child deserves, frankly. While you're praying and while I'm pulling up what that 73 does in this particular instance, let's check in with Athalor and with Mason. Who were off to see the wizard, the wonderful wizard of stage. <laughs> <laughs> wonderful wizard. Does anything happen along the way, or are you making a, a straight shot? Uh, I think Athalor is almost, uh, what would you call it? Irrespective of a situation, there's still badgering uh, mantra about like practicing draconic stuff. As they go, <laughs> he, he seems quite laser focused on learning this as quickly as possible, even while other shit appears to be more pressing. <laughs> and much right indulgence, respond, <laughs> and however, try to help however he can. Okay. As we make our way. Eventually, you reach all the way up, back up to the upper levels of the spire. It's not that far that you have to go, all things considered. But you teleport most of them. Yeah, exactly. But you make your way into the room and you see the sage with a complex ritual. She's got like rods with different carvings on them made of onyx and precious stones and metals that she has set out before her. She's burning some kind of incense. She has candles set up in a circle. She's putting together some sort of complicated ritual. You open the door and she turns just barely enough to see who it is. Hey, uh, Master Sage, uh, Master Elnau said you might need some help or at least some components. Nathalor's quill floats out and flies over to her circle to settle somewhere close around it or in the middle, depending on how open the middle of the circle is. Mm -hmm. If it's if it's ritual busy, but it'll just be on the periphery. All right, she takes a look at the quill. She looks at the two of you. Good, good. Join me. And she gestures to the outside of the circle. And with her hand and some chalk, will inscribe sort of circles that 
are adjacent to the central one that she's in. Connecting them, but not filling them in with anything. And then just sort of gesturing at you to do something. Apparently she thinks she knows what you're supposed to do. Or she assumes that you know what you're supposed to do. Athelor goes to stand in one of her circles. Mm -hmm. And looks at Mason like... <laughs> Shrugs. <laughs> how, how, how many circles are there? Uh, there's one for each. There's the central one that she's in, and then one for yeah. the each of you. Oh, okay, I'm not sure you to stand in the other one. She goes back to what she's doing, then she looks up at the two of you, confused. <laughs> You've not taken divination yet, have you? No. Not quite? I am struggling in numerology. Hmm. What are you good at? Writing things. Good. Magically. Exactly, then. Someone has called upon the power of dawn. Someone has used the book. Maybe. Maybe. We can find it. Trace it back to its source. The change was great enough, or if the user was sloppy enough, we may be able to see it. Add your will and your gaze to my own. Scribe something, whatever you need to aid me here. Do you need a like for like sample? She looks at the quill. Yes, but. I want your help as well. Both of your magic with mine. Both of your minds with mine. You've all seen the book. You've all been touched by its power. Well, she looks over at Mason. Or are just good with runes. <laughs> the rune guy. That's me. Both of you. This is. Uh, you may not have done complex ritual divination magic before. It is time to learn. Welcome to Archmajory. Okay, I can I can provide for the like for like in divining what where this may have come from. And Athelor kind of undoes the elven chain and mm -hmm. places a hand over the tiny bit of dawn magic that he tattooed onto himself and then places another hand on the on where the circles like a mm -hmm. Venn diagram between himself and the sage. Okay. And Mason, with these extremely vague instructions, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I think Amancha's role here is more like a definitely like a assisting Athor kind of thing. If mm -hmm. Athor is like, is is what Athor is doing like writing runes or he isn't he at the moment? Just isn't at the okay. Is that any part of this process? Sorry, what was that? I cut you off. Is, is that gonna be any part of the process? Uh, he's kind of waiting for more, and like at the <laughs> yeah. moment, it's like the, the free playtime in drama. All right. Mm. <laughs> for now then, Montreal will just, you know, because why not? Circle mental blessings, you know, this is just Great. kind of the, the standard at this point. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, that'll, for, that'll combo nicely. Yeah, any mind stuff. Hey. Um, yeah. Both so of you roll ar runes. Arcana checks, please. Okay. Oh, a 20 and a 1 in Arcana. <laughs> Unlucky. <laughs> oh, uh, I've got a lucky dice, though. Yes. Oh. Oh, what is my what, what is happening today? I have no idea what's happening what right fuck? now. What you lack in complicated numerological arcane theory, you make up for in sheer bloody mindedness and force of will, and sort of an intuition for the use of dawn magic. And you find as you're focusing that power that is imbued in you. The quill begins floating around you, and it starts inscribing things on its own, almost as if by autopilot, transcribing your will into whatever magic language it needs to be in, taking care of that on its own, translating for you effectively. And mantra, you are able to incorporate your runes of mental blessing into this, and you realize what the sage is doing here is not a spell. 
it is a piece of custom magic. She is making this up as she goes, which is always more time consuming and more dangerous than just casting a spell. There's a reason people don't do it. it most of the time, you spend a long time researching custom magic so you can codify it into a spell. She is basically freestyling at this point, but with a lot of math and a lot of calculations. But because of Athelor's intuition and because of Mantra's knowledge of runes and just being used to working with people and alongside people, you don't have that working style where you're sort of butting heads and you're using completely different languages. You are able to slip those runes of mental protection in with the greater structure as this very, very complex arcane matrix starts to take shape. Focusing around the sage's own mind, amplifying her senses, projecting them out into the world, and tracing the dawn magic that is imbued into Athelor's body and into the quill as she continues to focus on that. It takes a while. She already started before you got there. It's going to take an hour of just constant focus and iteration and adjusting her math, going back and forth. It's uh, strenuous, to say the least. When everything is finally ready, she is going to invite both of you to pour your power into this matrix in the form of spell slots. What do you got? Uh, I have three level threes. Mm -hmm. Same. Cool. Two level twos. Three level and twos. Three level ones. Give me a level three each if you would. Cool. Okay. okay. That power merges together, not unlike what you did to combine with the uh, the teleportation abduction spell. Why you're That's using that, you have no idea. Magic points. For what they might be worth in customizing spells. And the light, the runes that are inscribed on the ground begin to glow. Mostly with the sage's scintillating, shimmering, blue, tealish light of the dream magic that she calls upon, but tinged along the edges with the golden light of dawn. That light grows until your shadows project up onto the ceiling above you, stretching out in multiple directions, and then it flows towards her, and then her neck snaps directly back, and she stares straight up, her eyes burning with that golden light. Garnet, both Hi, of these present. prayer rituals are taking a while, but the arcane ritual going up on up top and the divine ritual going on down below. What is Garnet focusing on? You're focusing on your dad. Um, anything else? Uh, just like looking for guidance, but mm -hmm. it's kind of riddled, riddled in some doubt because she mm -hmm. kind of feels like a lot of the times, besides like the one miracle... Or, you know, he physically touched her like that mm -hmm. felt pretty real. But everything else, she's like, ah, oh, it could have been the Herald fucking with me again mm -hmm. and whatever. So it's like Slash looking for verification if he is real with like mm -hmm. Ruby seeing him. And so it's riddled in doubt. So it's like she kind of knows if she doesn't put her whole her whole truth into it, that it's not going to work. Um, mm -hmm. And that and maybe in, in some forms looking for forgiveness for the things she has done and it, it's almost like a confession type of mm -hmm. uh, admitting to what she's done wrong. And what is she and including in that? What does she think she's done wrong? <laughs> How confessy are we getting today? Not, not going into specifics, just in a general, like, I have sinned and I have done what horrible is... things. And You don't have to share this with anybody, <laughs> not even the gods. In Garnet's own mind and heart, what does... You know, privately, what does she think she's done? Well, definitely, like the Naomi thing is the most mm -hmm. recent thing. Thoughts of like even just the thought of taking out the Fraxis to yeah. like go through these plans, she feels like is like a sinful thought. Obviously, um, she's just, what else? <laughs> like uh, just everything that's gone on. The attempt to kill into Mahler fucking around with infernals just to get power and realizing that was wrong uh maybe even mistreating l now because of conflicts and stuff uh just the whole shabam okay 
It hurts. It oh. is painful. It is ever since you spent five years alone, these things have been almost at a distance. Like you definitely feel them, you're aware of them. Otherwise, you wouldn't be think holding on to them and thinking about them. But they have been distant or numbed. By thinking about these things, they are coming back up to the surface and you're experiencing those emotions physically. Not like it was when the Herald locked you in that dream with Naomi and just, you know, hotwired your brain to force you to experience those things. This is just you becoming cognizant and self-aware and it burns. Remove one point of void corruption, please. Oh, fuck. Burn away the void. <laughs> and as you're experiencing these things, you also feel a trace of that warmth that you experienced when you were connected with Ariana. Not exactly the same, but that closeness that you were deprived of for so long, that sense of not being alone, even of being taken care of or understood, flows in around you with that burning in your heart at the exact same time. There's comfort as well. And the sign on your hand burns. It only hurts for a moment. After that, it's just bright. And after the pain has passed, there is relief. It's not over. It's not gone. But it's not over. And that's all that happens. She'll probably like while she's praying. I I don't know if I'm like actively doing you, the. Uh, you can praying. you you know all the rituals. You're proficient in religion, right? I suppose, yeah. Yeah, you can uh, totally go along with. Yes. Uh, we'll probably eventually pause. Like if there's a break, we'll kind of let her lead the way, and maybe we'll cry a bit as she's feeling pain and shit like that, and uh. Be in her own thoughts and let Ruby lead the prayers. Which she does, uh, occasionally glancing over at you, but not daring to ask. Just more taking this on as her solemn duty that she has to, that it's important for her to take care of. Have you used any of your healing pool today? Hit dice? No. No, your lay on hands, your healing hands. No. Okay. Allegedly. You do gain one use of a smite. A smite? A smite, yes. Fog. Uh, I'm pulling up the details right now. So you don't see your father, you don't hear Zalar's voice, but you do feel that presence, you feel that connection, and you feel power magical power the part of you before you conjured up that dragon in Merrick's cave long ago that scarred you and changed you that part of you still alive underneath everything is yeah link me the type of is it like the divine mm -hmm. smite i'll pull it or? up it's a spell okay okay and it'll probably have to be tweaked a little bit because you don't do a whole lot of hand on you know hand-to-hand -hand fighting but yeah Oh, Searing Smite, okay. Um, and does this keep going? Uh, does the prayer keep going, or are we hitting a close? Uh, the prayer's gonna... Yeah, it's a Searing Smite at level three. A level three Searing Smite that you can combo. You cannot combo it with Shadow or Void Magic, but you can combo it with almost any other form of magic or attack. And... That's all that's going to happen during this process. Lose one point of void corruption, experience those things, and this power lodges itself within your soul. It 
to the prayer's ending and mm -hmm. okay as that's finishing up um she'll like be polite and kind of wait for ruby to be the first one to get up or mm -hmm. to put yeah. stuff away you know how like you wait at the table for everyone yeah. to you know <laughs> you kind of wait and <laughs> When she's kind of done and getting things back, she gets her ring back and thanks her. And mm -hmm. so it's like slightly disappointed that she didn't get like the visual things she needed, mm -hmm. but like felt the power, but would be able to assess that it's not like a nuke, essentially types of levels of power. Mm -hmm. It's some power and she's still bad or like being pulled in multiple directions mm -hmm. on and does it doesn't feel good guided the way that she was wanting to be guided and is mm -hmm. but still is like relieved and feels like a type of pressure being lifted off with like the void corruption you know mm -hmm. maybe in the sense feels that being lifted um the fact that you're feeling at all is where you can sense that you're feeling more than you were good and bad yeah um and just kind of thanks Ruby and says, uh, not sure if I've been forgiven, but I hope that I will be forgiven for the things I will have to do to protect the Academy and protect, protect Brontha. And that's all I can hope for is forgiveness, right? There is a teaching in the Zalarian way. Forgiveness is something that somebody gives you. And you can't control whether you receive it or not. Forgiveness is something that when you harm someone, only that person can give you. And they're not obligated to. And you can't control that. What you can control is redemption to change something that caused harm into something that heals harm or prevents it. That's something that you can do for yourself. You can let one part of yourself die to be reborn as something that you are proud of, that does make the world a better place. Zalar doesn't condemn or judge. Zalar purifies and redeems. Do you think anyone is capable of redemption? Yeah, anyone. Anyone. She smiles because she thinks not even of herself, but in Alex in that moment. But because she thought anyone was capable of redemption and then rejected the thought and thought Alex wasn't worth it. And now it's, uh, <laughs> now it's frustrating to hear the opposite mm -hmm. again. And, uh, she just smiles and takes her ring and places it on the shrine. Mm -hmm. And, uh, thanks Ruby again and says her goodbyes, but, the, the goodbye has more weight to it mm -hmm. when she says it. And she takes a second at the door to smile at the shrine and leaves. Okay. Uh, she's going to m move to try to give you your ring back, uh, but sort of hesitates too long because she's still processing everything that just happened. <laughs> oh my God, I was useful to the blessed child. Hey, wait, you forgot your... Oh, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, Jesus is such a cool dude. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she walks on water next. Jesus is my <laughs> um, Meanwhile, up in the heights of the spire, I need both Athalor and Mason to roll constitution saving throws, please. Excellent. These are concentration checks. This oh. is an extremely complicated piece of magic coursing through your bodies. And while I think you've both done some pretty screwy, unusual things with magic before, you're still not used to it. Despite all the gods that you've kicked ass on, etc., you're still kids and you're still students. So this is a lot to be flowing through you. And this is a complex piece of magic that is weaving through you. Mason, 
Your runes help to stabilize and guide this effect. Athalor, I want you to roll a flat wisdom check for me, please. Uh oh. Ooh. A 15. Ooh, yeah, this bad. is all working out so freaking nicely. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And one more roll from the sage herself to enact all of this. Don't fuck this for us, girl, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I made the wisdom roll. That's the hardest one. <laughs> oh, any second now. Any second now. Pause champ. Pause Loading champ. the stage's mind takes a while. 22. Nice. Okay. All of you get swept up in this spell. Your senses stripped from your bodies, spun like thread and cast out beyond the school. Cascading over the world in a way that you barely make sense to your minds. It's not as if you're a drone camera being sent up above. It's more like a data feed that your brains aren't calculated to receive broken and jarred images and bizarre sensations as this spell goes off but the sage's mind guiding with mantra's runes and athalor's focus this cascade of information suddenly coalesces and you are all standing on an infinite featureless plane for a moment each of you standing alone in this magic and a light bursts and flickers to the north. And then the spell collapses. Your senses rush back into your mind, piece by piece, fragmented bit by bit. It's, in, it's extremely confusing. You know when you have a nap and you wake up and you don't even remember what day it is, you think it's the next day? It's like that coming back to your own heads. The glowing of the runes subsides. The sage's head snaps back down and the light puffs away like little bursts of smoke dissipating into the air. And she shakes her head and sways on her feet for a moment. And I think, dramatically speaking, uh, Garnet walks in the door. <laughs> oh, it just happened. Was that supposed to happen? North. East to the north. And she sweeps out the door with her silk robes flowing behind her. I got it. What? Oh, hey. What are y'all up to? Apple just like flops onto his back, just like starfishing <laughs> in the circle. <laughs> stuff um, things. Yeah, divination stuff. It took a while. It took a lot. Oh, did you guys find who the that guy was in the basement? No idea, but the sage moving quickly, I'm going to take that as a good or a very bad thing. Um, no, we didn't find out who basement guy was. We should probably see if Phantom Waller found it. How long is it, Mason? How long has it been? That must have been, I don't know, an hour or something, maybe more. So what did you find? Some things to the north. A lot of things are north. Are you looking yeah, for the I know, book? Right. Pro yeah, probably. Book. I would assume with how fast Sage just booked it out of here. I'd, I'd have to assume that at the very least there's a there's a source of dawn magic or at least the remnants of maybe whatever spell was cast to make that happen to the north. And not overly precise, but it does eliminate like half a continent which is which is good mathematically mm -hmm. and also to the north implies that it's on this plane of existence unless it's another trap and how did you anchor or find this what garnet there's a whole bunch of complex magical paraphernalia and uh arcane diagrams on the floor between them and you have the big brain. You're welcome to roll Arcana if you'd like. <laughs> yeah, just points. What is going <laughs> on right now? What is happening? <laughs> it's Arcana time, baby. You immediately uh, deduce that the sage was performing a complex piece of customized magic to seek out a source of dawn energy. It was a divination ritual 
designed to detect a burst of dawn magic. Great. Athelor, do you have the quill? Yes. Yeah, floats uh, over to a sentence. Here, what's up? Takes the quill, is going to stand in the circle that they're mm -hmm. using. Mm -hmm. Can you uh, message L now <laughs> while I start this? Start. This? Well, maybe I should wait for the sage. I don't want this to mess up what the sage is doing. The magic of that ritual is fading away. Whatever they were doing, they're done. Uh, Mason, do you have that message cantrip? Uh, no. No. <laughs> wait, no one has a message cantrip. <laughs> it's been like a minute I that this conversation has taken place. That is 10 rounds of sage movement. <laughs> <laughs> I go run that. after her, I guess. What? Uh, I can send Una. Uh, <laughs> Athelor is still like flopped down on the floor. So, uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't really want to run right now, but I would. Wait, you guys have to give gave your magic to this thing? Mm -hmm. Yeah. We helped. Oh. I helped. Mm -hmm. We helped. We helped. <laughs> you did a lot. I just kind of wrote some runes, but it still felt like a lot. You helped. Good job. Maybe I. You're help. trying to. So you're trying to help too. What? What? What are, you, what are you doing? Maybe I should get help. I'll wait. Help we'll, with the help. Okay. <laughs> we'll uh, get Una to chase down El now, and we'll just prepare the book of Seosh in the middle of the <laughs> ritual with the quill. Okay. A few <laughs> minutes later, Elnel walks in, like using the staff of Ioth just to propel her as if she's trying to move faster. We think we found him. He's a student here at the academy. We have written records, and some of the other students are. Garnet? We helped. Not this. <laughs> yeah, we, I, I don't know what I'm this helping. is. I want to help. What? are you doing? What do you have in mind? The thing I told you about before to neutralize the book. I should have done this earlier and then this mind shit wouldn't have happened. I'm still not positive that it can be done. But she's going to step forward uh, walking around the edge of the divination circle. Explain to me exactly what we're going to attempt. Well, this circle seemed to have linked its way to the book. We also have the quill as a mm -hmm. sympathetic link. Mm -hmm. And I want to use the book of Seosh to send void magic through that link to act as an opposite conductor or to neutralize the hot and cold, the Okay. If the book isn't still active right now, then sending this is going to, if it works, would attack and deplete the energy within the book, or at least try to. If you're looking to create a ready-to-go counter, like we talked about earlier, then we need to build a uh, an array like we did to detect Quan when he exited. Well, she wouldn't know the name. Like we did to. What did we do that? <laughs> what, the hand machine? Yeah, the I, hand machine. I, I never. I'm not a big void head like you two, but. Uh, what if. Wouldn't the other book fight back and deplete this one too? The danger of the void. There is no depleting the void. That is not oh, the that's danger. Wonderful. Yeah. The danger it, is that it cannot be sated. Could it do the opposite? Could they like unleash the void in retaliation? More of it that can be handled? I don't know. These two powers have never interacted like this. Not in our world, at least. 
that's another danger. We're dealing with a lot of unknowns. But darn it. If we use this right now, we could attempt to deplete or utterly drain the energy that is in the book. If we set up an array that waits until it's activated, it might just not form that connection, not deplete the energy, but merely answer it when it's used, like you said. Both are going to be complex and difficult. And if you oh. do the first one, the sage will probably try to stop you. And at what point are we just going to let them have the book? At what point are we going to have, are we going to be forced to destroy the book? Well, we know more now. We know that it's to the north, right? And if the priority is still to get it back, I mean, like Athlor said, it, it narrows it down a little bit, not a lot, but it's something. If we're going to make this decision, Garnet, we can't make it alone. This is something that concerns the Archmages at the very least. Well, you should have the final say. I can, we can make this array and just make sure that the Academy can be safe, because we are not safe right now. You're right, we're not. I think the array sounds like a good idea. It'll at least get less pushback from the Sage. I think when the time comes... The sage will put her duty over her love. You really think that? I do. If there is anywhere that we get along, that we understand each other, it's in being willing to pay a terrible price to do what has to be done. So what, we have to go get the sage? I think Oops. she was actually going to get you. Roll persuasion check, please, Garnet. 23. She frowns. You can see she's really weighing it out. It would be worse to leave it in his hands than to lose it entirely. If he can change all of us or the world like he just did, then I don't know what choice we truly have. It may be time to... Oh, f I thought translates the Elvish <laughs> I get it. <laughs> you got the basics. It's the implication. Okay. Damn it. Damn it. Damn it! What? It's... She looks over at Athelor. I helped? Your father's upset. It gets worse. Untermaler strides into the room holding in his enormous hand a tiny little book very 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 small book another fucking book this is a school we have lots of those no this is a student's journal someone who knew our prisoner his name is Quan. he was a student here we're putting the pieces together right now for a proper interrogation. But I just received word that Bronthan legions are marching towards the, de the lines of Bothotlo. Uh-oh. Why? Wait, would I know why? 
<clears throat> yet? I'm, okay. Uh, you haven't heard anything about this yet. They're mobilizing their armies because they found proof that Bothotlo lured the Infernals to them. They're preparing for war. And if we don't make your father happy, Andrud is going to take whatever diplomatic and economic measures are necessary to ensure the safety and contingency of their bloodline. The sage now walks into the room, having just been whatever the hell the sage gets up to. The armies of Defraxis are gathering beneath their stones. They are bringing forth the iron butchers they keep in kennels and cages and arming them. The next person to walk in here better not have some exposition. The El now looks at the door and uses Mage Hand to slam it shut. <laughs> I propose we destroy the book. The Sage and Untermaler both immediately stare at her. Garna starts flipping to the last page. <laughs> <laughs> Getting ready to start. <laughs> We know that this war between Brontha and the Dragon Tribes is the design of our enemies. We know that Defraxis is preparing to retaliate against us. This is, these are too many threats at once. If Alexander can reach from wherever he is to do this kind of harm to us, then it is unacceptable to leave that power in his hands. We just learned that power lies within the mortal world, and it lies to our north. It is possible now to find it again. And if we seize it, to solve all of these ills in one blow. Besides, this magic, your magic, is dangerous. As dangerous as the Book of Dawn. Would you snuff out the light permanently before it can even change into something else? You threaten this world as once happened to the world before, simply to save ourselves. Yes, I would. There's a tense pressure in the air between the three Archmages for a moment. How precise is the book's location? North. If we try to destroy the book, is it likely that it's just done in kind of one fell swoop? Because if then we attack it and it doesn't work, and he knows we can attack it, wouldn't he just then use the rest of it? Why hasn't he already? I don't know. This is the first sign, the first sign we've had of him actually using this power. And for some reason, this is the first time we've been able to sense it. I don't know if this was a trap or an accident. Hmm. And what? what about the possibility of just drawing out the magic of the Book of Dawn and storing it somewhere here, and we can restore it once we get it back? That is even more complicated. But better perhaps than showing our hand too early. Better to take our foe's strength from him than to simply cast it aside. Did he just erase knowledge of somebody from all of our minds? What if he erases the knowledge of how to breathe from everybody next, Untermaler? We don't know what is within the realm of possibility at this point. Anything could happen. 
and it could happen now. We have no idea how much power is in the book. We have no idea how good his control is over it. It is better to leave those doors of possibility, just slam them shut and burn the whole place down, than to worry about that. If we know the book lies to the north, then perhaps we can find it through conventional means. We have friends and allies beyond the scope of this academy. We have eyes that can see and ears that can hear. And a fresh new roadblock to the north as well. Hmm? In the form of Athelor's dad being quite pissed. Right. The sage will speak up. If we strike now with your power, then it is final. That door cannot be shut. I move with Garnet. Everyone else also looks at the sage like she has two heads. <laughs> Let us use this power that you wield, not to snuff out the light, but to draw it like a siphon. And rather than letting it swirl down into oblivion, catch it ourselves. Take our foe's strength and make it our own. But we must wait until we know we can do it securely. This is an extremely delicate piece of magic. We are far beyond the bounds that any mage has ever attempted before. But we have a proven vessel. With the Staff of Ioth? No, the barrier. That's where it all came from to begin with. Barrier might be the only energy. receptacle large enough to hold all that power. You're right. I doubt even the staff could hold it. And because we would be creating a drain effectively, that's not a connection that can just easily be reversed. That's all pulling in one direction. And all we'd have to do to close that conduit would be to shut off the drain. And that should... Put us beyond the reach of, of immediate retaliation. I move, we pursue this magic, but do not leave these other threats unheeded. We cannot afford to deal with one threat at a time. We must multitask. Well, we have the two foremost void wielders in the known firmament here. Now that Merrick's gone, their opportunities to mess with this will be super limited. And those of us who aren't as versed in the siphoning can try and deal with these other issues. Yeah, so me and I'll now focus on the ritual, Athlor and Untamaler with the political debacle that you have with your dad. And someone needs to check on Brontha. What the hell they're up to. And... Mason's got the best chance, probably, with Bethotlo. Hmm. Yeah. Yes. And my, my Draconic Tutor from Tarsamore Hall could probably be a good help with that. Leg Day forgot the name. Athelor did not. I will devise a strategy. I will devise a strategy and continue the interrogations of both of our prisoners. Do not forget... These draconic faithful remain at large, and who knows how many of them have been replaced. Very well. Let's get to work. I thought looks over to Garnet. It's like, you keep hold of that for now. I just places her hand around the quill. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna... Try and find a way to make my dad less angry. Go get grounded, champ. <laughs> Good Thanks, luck. Guy. Athel kind of moves alongside Untamola, figuring that he's going to be the one who's mostly going to be taking the, the heat on this one. <laughs> this will not be immediate, Athelor. What can you, is there anything you can tell me useful of your father? Is a, is a believer in the Alphard's connection to the Dawn. That's a bit of a motivator. Traditionalist. Went on 
many journeys in his youth alongside his brother, who... How much does Intermola know about that? I he he knows something is up. I don't think he's been fully read in. I don't know if he's been fully read in, but he definitely is aware of your uncle as a factor. If nothing else, the cause of property dam part of the cause of property damage during the Green Gala. Yeah, uh, Athlor does his best to mm-hmm. explain the uncle situation, but that it should be handled quite delicately because mm-hmm. they cannot know that he knows. Yes. It's going to take him a little while to deal with that. Meanwhile, the sage is going to approach Mantra. I have need of you. Come with me. Okay. Well, what for? We have two prisoners. Mm -hmm. Perhaps you can shine a light on the first one. I can try. And she's going to lead you down into Kepesk's cell in the deep vaults. So we're probably going to go to that scene next. It's going to take Athlor a while to explain the entire uncle situation to Untermaller. Garnet, is there anything that you're doing before that scene with Kepesk? With Kepesk? Mason is being brought by the sage to go interview, interrogate oh. Kepesk. He has this whole mirror connection in his backstory that she's hoping she can leverage against an actual mirror clone. That would just okay. leave you and L now together effectively. Unless you oh. want to tag along with somebody else. No, we'll uh, get the ritual ready. Okay. Uh, she's going to reinforce to you how dangerous this is. We unbalance this void power at all, allow it to actually connect with the dawn energy, we get an explosive reaction. We let it run out of our hands and go too strong. It could devour all of this. Maybe never stop. It could turn the entire school into one massive sphere of annihilation. We've got two and different types of spheres. What, what is standing in the way of us succeeding? Focus? Execution? Power? Yes. <laughs> if you want me to be more focused... I can be, and she'll place her hand on the book of Seosh. If I'm what's holding us back, then I'll not be. No, 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 Garnet, hold on. What's holding us back is that nobody actually knows how to do this. We are making this up and inventing it as we go. There are natural forces at work and unnatural forces at work that all have to be carefully balanced. You are plenty smart already. You are the brightest student I have ever worked with. That should be enough. Should be? You're telling me if I fail, I could blow up the school. If we fail. But if you do what you're talking about, you might not care anymore about blowing up the school. All right? It could take that from you. So let's use the Garnet who does care about not blowing up the school and her brilliant mind and see if she can handle this first. And if things aren't working out, we'll go from there. Okay. All right. We have some research to do. Come on. And she is going to dig into all the information that she knows about the Academy itself, the sphere, how it works for the flow of Dawn energy, how much power she has over it as not yet initiated headmistress, how the staff of Ioth, how the quill connects to it. There's a lot of like complex arcane theory going into this before we start throwing a void hole in here and then like cutting it off before it connects and doing all this complicated stuff. She wants to make sure that you both understand the metaphysics at work first. That's going to be some major reading. And again, she reiterates that normally something like this is something you'd work on for years. It's going to just throwing it out there because we like talking to things that we don't see. Mm -hmm. It's going to place her hand on the book of Seosh. And she's like, oh, like, you know, after some reading is like, "Mm, is there like a speed run to Mm -hmm. this? Gonna place her hand on the book of Seosh and attempt to 
either send a message cantrip or attempt to make some kind of open a comms line with Seosh. <laughs> you have a collect, collect call. call from... Oh my god, <laughs> <laughs> And on that note, we're going to break. We'll see everybody in a few. <laughs> <laughs>